What happened to James Gang? Drummer Jim Fox first played with the Cleveland area band The Outsiders, but left them in 1965 to attend college. After they had a national hit the following year with Time Won't Let Me, Fox returned temporarily to play with them after their drummer was drafted. After leaving them again to return to school, Fox, heavily influenced by the sound of British invasion bands such as The Beatles, The Who, and The Yardbirds, he began to think about forming his own band and teamed up with schoolmate Ronnie Silverman on guitar, bassist Tom Chris, and keyboardist Bill G. Lombardo. The James Gang's earliest lineup consisted of Fox on drums, Chris on bass, Silverman on guitar, and G. Lombardo on vocals and keyboards. And after auditioning some 25 candidates for a lead guitar, the band decided to go with Gray Grandillo who later played with another popular Cleveland band, Rainbow Canyon. He was soon replaced by Dennis Chandler, who was then succeeded by John Mouse Mikelski, who with the Count Five had enjoyed a national hit with Psychotic Reaction. A short time later, Fox was invited to audition for a nine-piece rhythm and blues band that was being assembled. Fox initially declined the offer, but changed his mind when he heard that local guitar legend Glenn Schwartz, who was fresh out of the army, was to be in attendance. After hearing Schwartz play, and hearing that two of his influences were the Spencer Davis Group and Jeff Beck, Fox was impressed and invited Schwartz to join the James Gang. However, Mikelski was not as enthused by Glenn's playing as Fox and left the band immediately. Ronnie Silverman soon departed as well to enter the military. Bill Jerick was then brought in to play alongside Schwartz. No recordings were ever released by these early lineups of the band. Around Christmas time of 1967, Schwartz, who was found to be AWOL from the Army and was breaking up with his wife, decided to leave the band and move to California, where he ended up forming the band Pacific Gas and Electric. Just days later, shortly after the new year of 1968, a friend of Schwartz, Joe Walsh, from a band called The Measles, knocked on Fox's door and asked to be given a tryout as Glenn's replacement. Walsh was accepted and the band continued as a five-piece for a short time. That changed when G. Lombardo, who was still in high school at the time, left. Jerick and Walsh worked together on guitar parts, but in the spring of 1968, Jerick ended up leaving as well. He was replaced by a returning Ronnie Silverman, who had been discharged from the military. On Sunday, June 9, 1968, the group played a concert in Detroit at the Grand Ballroom opening for Cream. At the last minute, Silverman informed the others that he would not be joining them at the show. The band, desperately in need of the money, took to stage as a trio. They liked their sound as a threesome and decided to remain that way. In 1968, the band signed with manager Mark Barger, who was handling the career of a fellow Ohio band, the Lemon Pipers, who had just scored a number one hit with Green Tambourine. Barger put the gang in touch with ABC Records staff producer Bill Shimzik who got them signed to ABC's new Bluesway Records subsidiary in January 1969. In March 1969, the band now consisting of Fox, Chris, and Walsh released its debut LP, titled Your Album. Later in 1969, Bill was coordinating the music for the George England movie, Zachariah, which was released in 1971 based on the 1922 novel Siddhartha by writer Herman Hesse. Bill arranged for the band to appear in the movie with two James Gang songs, Laguna Salada and Country Fever. For the recording of these two songs, vocalist Kenny Weiss, a friend of Fox's, was brought in to allow Walsh to focus on his guitar playing. However, Weiss was gone by the time the group arrived in Mexico to film their scenes for the movie. Laguna Salada and Country Fever later reappeared as bonus tracks on the 2000 re-release of the James Gang Greatest Hits. 
In November 1969, bassist Tom Chris left the band after his father George was diagnosed with lung cancer after he had worked for Alco for years, where he was likely exposed to various industrial carcinogens involved in the production of aluminum. Chris was replaced by Dale Peters, who was brought in from another group called Case of E.T. Hooley. Chris also died from cancer on May 6, 2013 at age 63. In 1969, Roger Abramson went to JB's, a small club in Kent, Ohio, and advised Belkin Productions to start a management division with the James Gang and the band Silk, which included Michael Stanley. In July 1970, the band released its second album, James Gang Rides Again, which included the popular single Funk No. 49. In the spring of 1970, Belkin Productions arranged for the band to open for The Who for six dates during a U.S. tour, and their guitarist Pete Townsend was so impressed with them, he invited the band to open for him on their fall tour of the U.K., Townsend and Joe Walsh then started a long friendship with Pete telling Rolling Stone that Joe was the best American guitar player. In January 1971, they appeared on Top of the Pops in the UK. In July 1971, the gang returned to tour Europe. During their heyday, the band also shared the stage with artists like Grand Funk Railroad, The Kinks, Humble Pie, Three Dog Night, and Led Zeppelin. But after two more albums, 1971's Thirds, and the live album James Gang Live in Concert released later that same year, Walsh, who was tired of the pressure of doing most of their writing and singing and becoming the only melodic instrument in the trio, left the band in December 1971. He relocated to the mountains of Colorado and eventually formed Barnstorm. And then several years later, he later became part of the Eagles and is still with them to this day. Peters and Fox carried on with vocalist Roy Kenner and guitarist Dominique Troiano, both ex-members of the Canadian band Bush for two albums. And the two albums they did together were Straight Shooter and Passing Through, both released in 1972. In recent interviews, Fox stated that things didn't work out musically with Troiano as hoped, so Troiano left the band in 1973 and would subsequently join the Guess Who. Troiano was replaced by future Deep Purple guitarist Tommy Bolin after Joe Walsh called to recommend him to the band. Bolin joined the band in January 1973 and appeared on two albums, Bang and Miami, that saw the band moving from ABC Records over to Atlantic Records' ADCO label. During the recording of Miami in 1974, Kenner ran into legal troubles and was not available initially for recording. He gave notice telling Fox and Peters he would stay on until a replacement was found. A disillusioned Bolin decided to leave as well, albeit in a slightly different manner. After Kenner's departure, Bolin wanted to work with Dr. John and attempted to form another group with future Crosby, Stills, and Nash keyboardist Mike Finnegan before accepting the offer from Deep Purple in 1975. After Kenner and Bolin's departure, the band went over to England to look for a new guitar player. Jimmy McCulloch expressed interest in joining but was committed to Paul McCartney's wings. Fox and Peters decided to try again with a new lineup that included Bubba Keith and guitarist Richard Shack. This lineup recorded the album Newborn, which featured a cover of the Elvis Presley staple Heartbreak Hotel. The band released a final recording, Jesse Come Home, in February 1976, which featured the return of early members Phil G. Lombardo and Bob Webb. The original band James Gang disbanded in 1977, leaving drummer Fox as the only remaining member. After James Gang broke up, Fox was involved with the Belkin management firm. Other Latter Day Gang members included Bubba Keith and Bob Webb. The classic lineup of the band, consisting of Walsh, Peters, and Fox, first reunited in July 1991 in Cleveland. 
They also appeared on the Drew Carey Show in the 1998 to 1999 season and at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Allen Theater in Cleveland for three shows in 2001. Joined by keyboardist Mark Avsek, who used to play for Wild Cherry and Donny Iris and the Cruisers. The James Gang performed a handful of shows in the Cleveland area in 2005 and 2006, with Glenn Schwartz playing guitar and singing Thursday nights at Major Hoople's in the Flats. Schwartz died on November 3, 2018 at the age of 77. In April 2006, it was announced that the Walsh Peters Fox lineup of the group would be touring the U.S. later that summer, supported by keyboardist Bill Appleberry and backing vocalist Stacy Michelle. In March 2012, it was stated that Walsh was in the Cleveland area Lava Room recording studios with Fox and Peters, working on new recordings of their well known James Gang tracks. In August 2022, it was announced that the band would play two shows for the Taylor Hawkins Tribute Concert scheduled for September 3rd at Wembley Stadium and September 27th at the Kia Forum. Proceeds from the event raise funds for various veterans-related organizations via Walsh's Vets Aid Charity. And that's what happened to James Gang. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And give me some facts about the James Gang band that I failed to mention. And do you think they will ever reunite again for a tour? Let me know your opinion on that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.